Good evening and welcome to this public forum with the candidates for Mandan City Commission. My name is Ann Green and I am with the League of Women Voters. I will be your moderator for this evening. This candidate forum has been organized by the League of Women Voters of Bismarck Mandan and co-sponsored by the Bismarck Tribune and Dakota Media Access. The League of Women Voters is a nonpartisan organization that promotes the informed participation of all citizens in their government. The League does not endorse or oppose candidates or political parties. There are four candidates running for election for two open seats on the Mandan City Commission. We have three of those candidates here the, this evening. They are Carl Liebitz, Scott Davis, and Mike Braun. The audience here this evening, May 18th, 2016, is invited to submit questions on the index cards provided, <clears throat> or viewers and listeners may phone or text in questions for the candidates. The number to call is 667-3237. Texts may be sent to the code B. MLWV, that's Bismarck Mandan League of Women Voters, and then text the number 22333. Once you do, you'll get a response uh, text and you will be joined to this forum. This is intended to be a respectful exchange of ideas. Our purpose this evening is to provide voters with information about the candidates and their positions on issues that affect the people of the city of Mandan. Now, let's meet our candidates. You each have one minute to tell us why you are seeking election to the Mandan City Commission. Mr. Liebitz, we'll begin with you. Go ahead. Thank you, Ann, and thank you to the League of Women Voters and Bismarck Tribune and Dakota Media for this great opportunity. I am Carl Liepitz, and I'm excited to be running for a seat on the Mandan City Commission. I think Mandan's really uniquely positioned today to capitalize on generations of growth ahead. A couple of bright spots that I see. Number one, look at downtown Mandan. We recently had a great report on the diesel remediation. There's no question Mandan is open for business, and I think businesses are going to head that direction soon. Also, look at the northwest part of Mandan. We have, you know, obviously Walmart. CHI, St. Alexius, uh, the pharmacy. There's a lot of businesses moving into that neighborhood. And I think that's going to be another bright spot in our future. So I'm excited to the exchange tonight with my fellow candidates and uh, look forward to this opportunity. And thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Ann. And, and thank you for the invitation tonight. Um, Scott, I'm Scott Davis, and um, I'm very proud to say uh, uh, resident here uh, with my, me and my young family, wife Lorraine and our four children. Uh, very excited uh, to be living here, be part of this, this very strong, vibrant community. I think um, my, my asset to uh, serving in, um, and hopefully in this commission uh, capacity, I can bring a lot of um, very good ideas, strong leadership uh, qualities, uh, decision making, and paying attention to details for our community, our citizens, and and most importantly, our future of, of the growth of Mandan. So very excited to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Braun. Thank you, Ann. Thank you to the uh, League of Women Voters, uh, the Bismarck Tribune, and Dakota Media Access. My name is Michael Braun, and I'm seeking re-election. I've been a resident of Mandan my whole life. I have pride and loyalty to the city, and, and I, I'm very pleased at the direction it's going. I sought election in 2012 because there were issues that I thought needed to be addressed, property tax, infrastructure, uh, and, and I want to continue down those paths and, and work at continuing with the economic development that we have been seeing, which is fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now we'll move on to questions. Those, these questions have been developed by the League of Women Voters, the Bismarck Tribune, our in-house audience, and viewers at home. For our audience this evening, you may submit a question um, using the index cards that have been provided to our audience members. Viewers may submit questions this evening, May 18th, by calling 667-3237 or by sending a text to 22333. I believe I misspoke earlier. Send that text to 22333. In the text body, put in, type in BMLWV. You will then get a response text indicating that you have joined the forum. You can then submit your questions via text. The candidates have not been giving advanced copies of the questions here this evening, and each, each candidate will have uh, one, 30, one minute to respond to each question. Please comply with that time restriction so we can get in as many questions as possible tonight. Our timer will let you know when you're down to 30 seconds, then 10 seconds, and then stop. We will begin with Mr. Davis. Mr. Davis. What's your position on the city's tax rebate plan for new restaurants? Good question. And I think it's a uh, common question across our, our state, our cities, uh, uh, with leadership. And um, <clears throat> I've always been for a tax incentive of attracting businesses, uh, new businesses, expanding business, and so forth. Um, my capacity on serving on, on commerce boards currently gives me a first insight of how these tax rebates, tax incentives work and how they don't work and how each city applies them and, and, and don't, doesn't apply them. <clears throat> and so, so I, I am in support of that. I think we need to entice and attract new businesses because obviously it creates tax growth for our citizens, for our services, for infrastructure, and hopefully buy down of, of taxes, property taxes for our citizens and for the future and for also for our schools as well. So very, very important that we keep uh, these type of tax incentives uh, moving in the right direction. Mr. Braun, same question. Very good. Thank you, Ann. If we didn't have to offer incentives, I would be all for that. Uh, if we could bring in businesses and, and restaurants and, and the like, that would be wonderful. The simple fact is, statistically around the country, that is the way the country is going. You have to in incentivize uh, restaurants or any other business to come to your community. They are looking to lower their overhead just like any other company. So I, I firmly adhere to that. And in re being part of the um, economic development, um, working with Alan Huber and the BMDA and, and the MPO, and that is my portfolio, I have seen directly how that influences and, and can swing one person that who's riding the line to come and demand in because the bottom line is they look at traffic counts. And if it's traffic counts, we can't compete with Bismarck. But if we offer that incentive, that gives us the little extra cushion or push that would allow them to come to our, our community. So I, I, I am all for it, and, and I think we should continue the way we're going. Thank you. Mr. Lipitz, your position on the city's tax rebate program for new restaurants. Thank you, Ann. So I, I fundamentally, I think, have a little bit of a different approach. I, I think that you know, I really believe in the free market and supply and demand and generally think that entrepreneurs are going to look for opportunities in the community uh, and if there is a, a demand then generally they're going to, to see that opportunity to make money and move in and so that's that's kind of where I start from uh, fundamentals. If we have incentives, um, which I agree they're not, they, sometimes they do have a place but ideally you would target more primary se sector jobs, uh, things that would have a much uh, broader kind of multiplier effect in the economy, bring in more dollars, more jobs, more spending. Um, so that would be kind of a second priority uh, in incentives. And, and third, if, if you go beyond that, I think we really need to look at what type of return are the incentives providing. And I'm looking forward to this restaurant incentive, and I think we need to be accountable to the taxpayers to see if, in fact, it, it is effective, and I hope it is. Thank you. Thank you. A uh, question from a listener, and we will begin with Mr. Braun. What do you feel is the biggest issue Mandan residents are currently facing, and what are your plans to fix it? 
Thank you. And being a resident, the, the biggest issue that affects me is a continual issue of property tax and, and the unknown. With, without, without the group effort of the park board and the, and the um, Mandan School District and the city working to buy down the mills to keep the property tax low and the state legislators continuing to pass legislation that will buy down the mills for property tax, we're, we're fighting against each other. There has to be a commonality and a working relationship with each of these groups if we're going to move that way. We have an upcoming difficult time uh, in terms of financial and fiscal support that we are receiving and how it's going to affect the budgets. And that's one of the issues that may come about as to whether we take money away from that, that area. And I'm against that wholeheartedly. So thank you. Mr. Lipitz, same question. So I believe the, probably the biggest issue facing Mandan is, is property taxes in a sense, but I really think it's more about generating growth momentum. And, you know, as I, as I mentioned in the top, I do think we, we are well positioned. We have a beautiful community and uh, just need to really focus on a few key things to drive that growth and drive that momentum. And, and number one, I'd look at fiscal responsibility. And what that means to me is managing spending and working to reduce debt. I mean, Mandan today currently has about $70 million in in debt. And so in an annual budget of approximately $30 million, about a third of that or $9 million is going to service debt. That's a, that's a heavy burden on the, on the taxpayers. And so we need to look for ways to reduce debt of the city long term. And I think that will, over time, generate some relief on property taxes and stimulate growth. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davis. Well, I think it's budgeting. You know, projections is a challenge, I think, right now with the current state of commodity prices. You know, granted, we are predominantly a commodity state. In some shape or form, these, these, uh, the economics of our state trickles down to uh, local governments. So I think the projections of projecting budget futures, savings, cost savings, tax, tax incentives, uh, tax cuts, um, and even possibly cuts, you know, those are things that we really, really need to seriously look at. And looking at our demographics, whether it's housing, uh, the demographics of our aging population, the elderly, the, the young families that are moving to, to this city, uh, the also the importance of law enforcement, keeping our, our, our um, communities very, very safe and attracting talented businesses, talented people through workforce development and increasing the employment base for each of those employers, the private sector of our, of our community is so, so vital in keeping the strong employment base here in Mandan and not uh, crossing rivers and crossing boundaries, keeping them right here is, is very, 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 very important. Thank you. Next question, we'll start with Mr. Lipitz. The city needs to address, address both existing and new infrastructure needs. Several sources of revenue have been cited to fund improvements. What sources of revenue do you suggest tapping? I, I would, number one, look at the growth opportunity. And you know, as, as we generate additional property tax base and additional sales tax base, it's dollars into the city that we can use to invest in infrastructure. I also think that there's maybe a way to get a better return on our investment with infrastructure. So if we can, you know, obviously if things are broken, you have to fix them. You know, if a street is, is crumbling apart, we have to fix it. But if we're going to spend a dollar of the taxpayer's money on infrastructure, and there's an opportunity to invest it in a way that might get a better return on that investment. So you know, think about like maybe an industrial park or a, a manufacturing type development area. If we can look at investing the dollars in, in that way, then I think we might really launch some momentum, attract uh, additional manufacturing, more primary sector type jobs, and uh, that will have a much better return for the uh, taxpayers. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Davis, same question. What sources of revenue would you suggest using to address new and existing infrastructure needs? Well, it goes back to the role of government. I think there is a role for our city government to play, and also there's a private sector role to play. And to marry those two in working together on tax incentives, on infrastructure, you know, I have the good fortune of working very hard and getting the trust of the systems that we have uh, in our state offered by some of our state agencies, Commerce, uh, CDBG, um, housing finance agency, all those systems I know very well of what they can provide and what they cannot provide. I also have very, very close uh, uh, relationship with our congressional. So there's a federal side of this. Uh, maybe there's some federal agencies and federal grants that we could apply for that, uh, that don't hinder um, our uh, way of doing um, um, 
uh, business here in, this, in, in our city, but I think it's important to look at all those avenues and, uh, and those things I have very, very strong knowledge of and know exactly how to navigate through those processes in attracting and, and retaining uh, businesses and, and growth for our city. Thank you. Mr. Braun. Thank you, Ann. Good question. Uh, the first thing that we started to do is, is we were part of the city that was elected for the hub funds, and we started to apply those hub funds to the infrastructure. Um, where, where to get the money from goes closely with economic development. You have to have businesses within your uh, community in order to tax those sales tax dollars and apply those to the infrastructure needs. As I mentioned before, I, I am not... I am not willing to, nor, nor do I want to, unless, unless there's World War III, that I want to start taking property tax and raising those and using those to, to, for in infrastructure needs. I want to stick with the sales tax dollars, the hub FUD, if it's available, and, and go that, tr that route. So thank you. Thank you. Next question. Where does the man, and I apologize, we're going to begin with Mr. Davis. Where does the Mandan Growth Fund fit into the funding picture? Well, that's a very, another good question. I think there's always mechanisms and places for various growth funds. Uh, keeping those sustainable, I think, is key. And again, it goes back to the fundamental practice of your employment base, keeping people at work, keeping them applying for jobs, workforce development, whether they're graduated out of high school or graduate from college. We need to attract those, those um, our hometown people back to our city. I think that's a that's a very very key in making this uh, sustainable and the growth fund uh, sustainable. Again, going back to property tax relief, uh, services, uh, safety, quality of life, and providing services and access to a lot of things that we have. Also, I, I think that another important is uh, tourism. The, the 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 strong events that we have in our city, aside from Fourth of July, the races, the rodeos, you know, keeping those things going through the winter months as well, is exactly what uh, I'd like to be a part of. So. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of uh, um, partnerships that I think we can uh, uh, do in sustaining that growth fund. Thank you. Mr. Braun, how does the Mandan Growth Fund fit into the funding picture? I think, I think it's a, uh, an absolute need that we have in the community. It was, it was set up um, about a decade ago, and it was designed to bring in and, and promote economic development within the city because we had a distinct disadvantage with Bismarck, um, and up to then, w we were having trouble bringing in business, so we offered these incentives uh, with a growth fund, and then we have storefront improvement. Uh, in addition, they added the Renaissance Zone. Um, statistically, the growth fund has brought in and, and helped promote many of the businesses that, that are thriving now and are in our community. Um, being the economic development portfolio and working with Ms. Huber and the BMDA, um, I really enjoy the position I'm in right now, and I would like to continue uh, with that portfolio, if I may, um, and to continue to bring in business. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Lipitz. Yeah, so I, I think the Mandan Growth Fund has definitely generated some success. Um, you know, and what I'd like to do on really all the incentive programs, uh, Renaissance Zone or, you know, whatever it is, just kind of take a step back and look at what type of return are we generating for the, the taxpayers. And for every dollar that gets invested or revenue that gets deferred as a result of an incentive, I think we should be accountable to the taxpayers to try and show them the you know true return on their investment and true results and so i think that's what i would do with with the mandate growth fund it, it certainly if it's been successful then it, it, it has a key role in our community and it should continue um, but again i just take a step back and look at all of them and and try and really strategically think about it you know what makes the most sense going forward thank you next question we'll begin with mr braun uh, this question comes in via text did you or do you support the Mandan Sports Complex? <clears throat> and please explain why or why not. I did. I, th I think it's, uh, it's, it's, a needed, it's needed for our community. I, I was involved in athletics my whole life. There's so many things that you can learn from athletics. Self-discipline, teamwork, compromise, uh, helping each other, personal strength. Um, Th those are all wonderful things that build character, and this sports facility promotes that. Um, you, can, you can get those things elsewhere, but uh, athletics puts them all together and brings them forward. The Ferris Field is, uh, is a part of, of Mandan, and it's hard to say 
we're going to let that go. But if you saw the new complex and, and how it, it's bright and it promotes the city and it's in a wonderful location and people come by and they see this, this is representative of what Mandan is. Mandan is a community and it's, it's a place where you can raise your children and, and enjoy life there. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lipitz, same question. So I, I support it for probably two reasons. One is I, I think the, the uh, you know, it, it fills a need in the community. And, you know, Ferris Field was wore down. Um, there's a shortage of ice time for, for hockey players. And as you look around the state, I mean, hockey is a, a thriving sport. And so I think it fills a need. Uh, no questions asked. Um, but probably more importantly, I look at it is the, the voters of Mandan approved that project. And they approved the, the uh, tax increase to pay for that project. And, and I really think in an elected position, we have to really work hard to listen to the voters and listen to the really the community and the voice. And so for both of those reasons, I support it. Thank you. Same question, Mr. Davis. Yeah, I, I, I voted uh, yes for it. Uh, my family voted for it. And um, because of the young family, I think if you keep in mind the, uh, the medium age of our city is, is around 38, 39, if you look at some of the, uh, the data out there. And so it, to me, I think it's really, uh, for me personally, it's ownership. You know, it gives me some ownership in my community. Um, I volunteer for a lot of um, uh, parks and rec. I'm currently a coach, a volunteer for uh, our Bismarck, uh, excuse me, a Mandan Backboard Club. And I'm proud to say I'm the vice president of that now. So we, we do a lot of tournaments. So we, we, we have a nice venue now that we can do tournaments. We can do hockey. But the other thing I think to keep in mind, too, is the, 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 uh, the winter months, aside from the sporting events, how can we keep other events attracted uh, coming to our, to our city, whether it's concerts, uh, roping events, rodeos, uh, other events, but have this place booked every weekend or every other day if possible. So I think that's very, very important in keeping that place open for business. Uh, keep it busy, and again, I think it will create more jobs for people to work at some of those events as well. So I'm a big supporter of, our, of that event center. Thank you. Uh, Miss, uh, next question will begin with uh, Mr. Lipitz. The city of Mandan has spent years trying to attract and retain retail business. How would you propose the city attract and maintain retail business? So I, I really would focus on on a couple of things. Uh, you know, one, as I started, we talked about fiscal responsibility and just trying to m really manage spending and work to lower debt. And I think you know, I talked to one uh, business owner in downtown Mandan uh, retail that expressed an interest in trying to expand her business. And she wanted to grow, wanted to look for maybe a larger space, but was concerned about the, the tax load that that would bring onto her business. So I think if we can be prudent in our spending and managing the checkbook, uh, managing the balance sheet of the of the city really, I think that will help make it more profitable for businesses. Um, you know, I also would again, kind of circling back to the incentives, I'd like to go through all the programs that we have out there and really try and drill into what's worked, what hasn't worked. And you know, we have a very professional uh, team at the city, and work with them to come up with a, a strategy going forward to see what really is going to get the best return on the investment for the taxpayers. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Well, for me and my background, I have a strong background in, in marketing, branding. We're Manda. And I think we need to create our own identity. We're not other cities. We're not neighboring cities. We're Manda. And I think that's important that we, we, we tell the world that who we are and what we do, how exciting it is in attracting, recruiting, retaining businesses, young talent, um, and taking care of our elderly, I think, is, is also key to this, too. But I think the marketing brand, whether it's tourism, like I said before, the events that we have, I think obviously we keep those growing, we keep, keep those strong. But I think as a commissioner, if, if voted in, I would be a, a huge cheerleader, a huge recruiter in talking to businesses, talking to people of coming, come to here to live because it's a great place to live. It's a great place to live, to retire. It's a great place to uh, raise a family, and it's very, very safe. So that's what, uh, what I would do as commissioner. Thank you. And Mr. Braun. And could you repeat the question? Sure. The city of Mandan has spent years trying to attract and retain uh, retail business. How would you propose that the city attract and maintain retail businesses? We continue with what we're doing. Uh, we, we have Alan Huber, which is the economic development personnel, which was brought in. The reason why she was brought in was because we were having trouble bringing in and maintaining businesses. And it goes back to a simple 
a simple answer, and that is called traffic counts. If you look at Bismarck, they have more per square capita than we do, and the businesses look at coming in and, and having the least amount of overhead, and so they look at a place that has the traffic counts. So what do we do to combat that? We, 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 promote, uh, we promote the city, and we look at economic development and how uh, incentives can bring them in. And so I would continue with what we're doing and perhaps even more aggressively. Thank you. Thank you. I want to uh, remind our audience members here in, um, here in the building that they may submit their questions using the index cards that have been provided. Alternatively, any viewers who are listening today on the 18th of May may call 667-3237 or text 22333, that number again, 22333. And in the um, message area of your text box, type in the letters B M L W V. You'll then be given a prompt joining us to the forum, and you may submit your questions. All right, next question will begin with Mr. Davis. What strategies should the city implement to address affordable housing concerns? Good question. And I go back to demographics. You know, what is our demographics? What is the acreage needed to develop new housing, to rehab new housing? What is the uh, need for retirement people? What is the, uh, the numbers for, for, for new families moving here? So I really look at the, the demographics of, of housing development. And I think a big, big part of this is obviously infrastructure. How are we going to pay for infrastructure, roads, sewer, uh, lift stations and so forth, and who's going to burden those type of, uh, who's going to pay for it? Again, I go back to tax base, you know, uh, businesses, jobs, tax returns, et cetera, incentives, uh, working with our state partners, our legislative body, who I have a great relationship, and I know that legislative process very well, um, and also possibly work with our federal partners, too, about what's out there to develop and, and retain new development for, for our city, the future, in all demo demographics, but you really look at, you know, the, the apartments, you know, the one bedroom, the two bedroom, and so forth. So I really need to focus on that as well. Thank you. Mr. Braun, same question. What strategies should the city implement to address affordable housing concerns? With the wonderful oil industry that we had, it created inflated costs, which inflated uh, the housing, and, and it sustained that for a good time. Now with the oil industry going down, we still hold those costs to some degree at a higher level. Um, we as a commissioner, as a as city, should uh, promote, uh, emphasize, and request that the developers that are coming in make a portion of what they're building as, as um, low-cost housing, if you will. Uh, that is one of the things I would do. Um, I, that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Braun. And Mr. Lippitz, same question. So I, you know, I certainly currently sit on the Planning and Zoning Commission, and, and I see developers have come in uh, on a fairly regular basis trying to fit this need in our community. And so I think that's evidence to, to one extent that if there's a demand and there's an opportunity to make money from a developer, uh, they're going to do that. But I think we as a city need to work with them to make that happen. And you know, right now we're in the process of looking at maybe some uh, smaller lot type options, uh, ways to develop in a little bit more of a compact or efficient manner. And you know, if you if you could put in a zoning that would support that on a, in a new development, um, that might be one way to really generate some more affordable housing in a way that uh, you know developers are going to be able to take advantage of, and and the communities and residents are going to like. Um, I also think we need to be thoughtful in how we invest in infrastructure. And if you're going to, and I mentioned this on the top, if if you're going to put a dollar here or a dollar there, and there's a way, you know, if, if part of that investment can support future growth or future development, um, maybe more efficiently, then, uh, then on a, as an alternative, then we should think about that so that the infrastructure really supports that development and that affordable housing. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question, Mr. Braun, we'll begin with you. Do you support the two-year tax exemption for new construction? that exemption being up to $75,000 that the city of Mandan currently provides. That's coming before the, uh, the commission. And up to this point, I have 
when when you look at the amount of seventy five dollars and how it it contributes to the total amount of what the housing costs now it it seems like a almost frivolous amount it it doesn't offer an, an extensive um, relief if you will so at this point i I don't know if I think people are going to move to Mandan because of the community, not because we offer a $75,000 rebate on a new home. So at this point, I, I, I'm not for continuing with that program. Thank you. Mr. Leapett, same question. Yeah, so I'll say, you know, when I, my wife and I purchased our home in Mandan, it was a new construction, and we were, you know, part of that program and able to take advantage of that. And as a, as a home buyer at that time, I certainly enjoyed it. But I, I agree with Mr. Braun. I think we should step back and, and really think about is this working is that you know what's the real dollar impact to our residents and is that the best way for the city to in a sense invest those dollars um, you know if it, if it truly is deemed to be effective in attracting people to move into Mandan you know I'd, I'd be open to, to discussing it but you know that that those dollars have to be accountable to the taxpayers and we need to figure out if it's an effective tool or not and if it's not it should not be continued thank you mr. Davis yeah, you. I think you really need to analyze, uh, you know, the, the incentive process here. Um, I look at construction costs. You know, uh, obviously construction costs have have gone up. The price of lumber, um, sheet sheet metal, and so forth have gone up, and that has burdened obviously the uh, the developers who do good work here in in our city, and uh, you know, and, and a lot of permits that have uh, we've seen growth in in our city in the last five years. I'll say. But I think some of these programs really need to be, be revisited because of the uh, the incentives and obviously who's paying for it. Is it our citizens that are paying for this or is it coming out of some other fund that's generating through the city? But again, I think the, the cost of these incentives need to be re, uh, reviewed and analyzed uh, before uh, we can make a, a concrete decision on some of these. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next question, Mr. Lipitz, we'll begin with you. Here's a question uh, that came in via text. How do you support child care as a community infrastructure to build business and support workforce? Well, there, there's no question. Child care is, is essential. Families that, that uh, have young children, uh, they, they need it so they can go, go to work. And there's certainly been a shortage historically in that. And, you know, if, if there's a demand for it, you know, if we can do an effective job of prom promoting that need, perhaps uh, trying to attract more people in, um, then maybe that would kind of through the private development, if you will, that would uh, theoretically fit that need. But I mean, absolutely, if you if you don't have a safe, uh, reliable place to leave your children, people are going to think twice about whether or not they want to put their children in, in child care or daycare. And so, you know, it's essential. You need to have quality uh, re resources and that, you know, is part of a community need that we need to fill. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Yeah, this one's a little personal because uh, I have a young family, so I've been through the child care process quite a bit and still currently uh, um, pay for child care, which is a great thing, by the way. It's a part of our economy. It's a strong part of our economy. We need child care in our city for mom and dad to go to work or for maybe dad to stay home or mother to stay home, depending on, on your situation. But I think a part of this, in my experience, has been uh, whether it's a private child care service whether it's in-home, out-of-home, I've been part of that. Uh, I've utilized those services. Just making sure that they're safe, making sure that uh, they're certified and up to licensing requirements uh, by our city and uh, maybe by our state too. Those are important questions to ask, but they are a vital part of our community and the growth. And, the, uh, and, and I think it's also an attractive part of our city too that we have quality child care services. And I think we take, take that a step further with preschool, kindergarten, and to our school systems. I think that's so important too. And keeping um, the future of our of our my family, my little my little my little ones uh, into the school system. So it's a good thing. Thank you, Mr. Braun. Same question. Thank you, Ann. Uh, definitely, child care is important in this day and age when both parents have to work to provide for the family. Um, the, fam the the parents look for someone that is competent. They look for guidelines. They look for policies in which they're held accountable, and uh, that is something that that I feel personal, personally that you have to ensure that those things are being met. You hear horror stories about some of the child care that are not doing what they're supposed to and there's neglect and there's things going on like that. And I think as, as a city, um, we have some push in how we can, can direct and, and promote and push and make sure that uh, 
the child care facilities, not so much the private, but more of the, the larger scale, um, are doing what they're supposed to as part of the community. Because I think when we, when we instill that and, and push that, um, it, it tells what we're, what we're all about as a community. So thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Mr. Davis, we'll begin with you. What strategies should be implemented to enhance fire services in Mandan, particularly on the north side? Well, there again, it goes back to our tax base. What can we afford? What can we build? Obviously, fire is a crucial part of our, the safety of our well-being uh, for all people in response. You know, there were, where there were um, uh, FTEs, uh, full-time employees of the city for the department, has to be looked at. How, how can we afford that? Uh, but also keep in mind the growth, which, 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 which we're doing very well at as far as the growth goes. So those needs of, of the basic services is the role, in my opinion, of, of the city commissioner to look at those and to, to somehow find a way to build those, those basic services uh, for the safety and well-being of our citizens and protection and um, safety of our, of our people. So, so those strategies need to be uh, talked about talked about with our current fire system, and, um, and, and maybe there's a partnership with our county as well. But a lot of things that need to be discussed on the table. Thank you. Mr. Braun. Mr. Nodello is a, uh, is a wonderful leader in the fire department, and uh, he's very well read. He knows the policies. He knows the procedures. He knows uh, the requirements as to what is needed. Um, but, but he has a personal approach, and that is he has a truly genuine care for the, the citizens of, of Mandan. And so at this particular point, we have been talking about another fire station because by policy, you, you should only be between three and five minutes away from a call. And right now, being south or here in the main area and trying to get uh, way up by Old Red Trail, um, you're going to have a difficult time meeting that. And so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm supporter. Um, of the fire department and, and how he runs his organization. I, I think that we have to do what we can to maintain the staff that he has. Right now, no one wants to leave. It's just a wonderful place to be. And I think we need to continue to do that. So thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Liebitz. Yeah, the, there's no question. The fire department does a great job and, and fills a valuable role in our community. I know my wife thought our house was on fire last year. Uh, it turned out not to be, but uh, she, we were really impressed with the professionalism of the crew that that showed up, so I mean, they just do a great job. Uh, regarding the north side of town, my understanding is that we currently have some hub city uh, funding uh, flag to build that north uh, fire hall, and I would definitely support that. You know, it, might, it may take some time to fully staff it and you know have an actual engine there and, and uh, a team, but you know, to me, if, if we're able to hang on to those dollars and spend it in that way, I think that'd be a good investment and uh, would make a lot of sense to help really bring that first-class uh, service to the north side of town as well. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you for your presence here this evening and for your thoughtful responses. We're now going to move on to closing arguments, or excuse me, to, to closing statements. Easy. We're not, we're not arguing here this evening. <laughs> to your closing statements, you will each have one minute, um, and we will begin with Mr. Braun. Oh, how nice. Thank you, Anne. I'm Michael Brown, and as I mentioned, I'm seeking re-election. I've lived here my whole life. I love the city of Mandan, and I can't think of any place I'd rather be. When I first ran in 2012, property tax was at the top, and I think it will continue to be at the top for as long as you're a resident. Uh, economic development as part of Mandan, because of the, the situation we're in with Bismarck, is incredibly important. But as I've been here, I also see infrastructure needs that, that really need to be addressed. We have some roads that are in disrepair and need to be worked on. And I would love to work with the uh, engineer or, or work on a plan in which I can see how the, the plan looks out 10, 15 years at the different roads that need to be worked and how we can support that or move that process along. I would appreciate your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Liebitz. Thank you again for this opportunity and to my fellow candidates for a great exchange of ideas. You know, Mandan's a, a beautiful community, and I think we're really well positioned for the future, uh, not just for next week, but for generations to come. And if we can really focus on being fiscally responsible and making smart decisions on how we invest in our community, our infrastructure, uh, supporting our law enforcement, our fire departments, really provide that first-class services to the community, I think we're going to 
enjoy generations of prosperity and growth going forward. And the other thing I'll, I'll leave you with is, you know, we all have ideas up here that, that we share, but I think it's important that everybody in the audience, or everybody at home, you know, really sit back and think about it and, and think about ideas that they have to help uh, move Mandan forward and take advantage of some of the opportunities that we have. And so if it's next week, next year, two years, if you have a great idea, please approach your leadership, uh, the city leadership, and, you know, share that idea because everybody's voice and everybody's perspective is really valuable and needs to be heard. So thank you. Again, uh, I appreciate your consideration and your vote on June 14th. Thanks. Thank you. And Mr. Davis. Yeah. Um, it's my credentials, my work ethic, my background, working for our former governor, working for our current governor at a cabinet level. I'm in these conversations every day, every week, whether it's infrastructure, commerce, taxation, uh, roads, higher ed, education. I'm in these discussions every day. We're constantly planning. We're constantly budgeting. We're constantly evaluating how we run government effectively. So I'm in it every day. And I like to bring these same, these same values, the same work ethic, the same assets that I have currently to our, to our great city here in Mandan, and most importantly, to the citizens and the future of Mandan. So I'd really appreciate your vote uh, this coming June. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. I would like to also thank the Bismarck Tribune, Dakota Media Access, and the volunteers here from the League of Women Voters for organizing this forum. Thank you to the viewers at home and the audience members here this evening for taking the time to learn more about the candidates and the issues. This program will replay several times on Government Access Cable Channel 2 and 602 HD and will be available for online viewing at www.freetv.org in the days leading up to the June 14th election. We will now close this candidate forum. We remind you that you will need a form of identification to vote in North Dakota. You can find identification requirements and additional voting information on the websites or at the office of your county auditor or the North Dakota Secretary of State. Thank you and good night.